Yeah, it's numbers are turning. Hey, two big people howling mad mud duck back at you. Oh, early Monday morning, about 1.20 in the morning on the 25th of April, clusterfuck 2022. Evidently, I made it through another week. A uh, hell of a week it's been. Uh, got John's, uh, my nephew John's alternator shit done. Still got to do some helping him around on his yard work and fixing parts of his house. Uh, while I was plant on the phone planning that with my brother because they said, hey, can, called me, said, hey, can you do that? And then while I was planning that, I was getting phone calls in, uh, from a number I didn't recognize, and then while I was on the phone talking to John about it, setting it up with him when it was, uh, he needed me over there to do it, or when he wanted to do it, get a text from Rhonda, her car is broke, can I come help? And I hemmed and I hawed, and I, no, not really, and, you know, I'm not putting on the Captain Save a whole outfit, and, uh, then she was 28 days stuck down in this place where some so-called friends towed her down so they could work on her car. I don't know what the fuck they did to her car because it had quit running. And I think it's timing bell of Taurus. A stupid little sensor that goes in the... uh there's two temperature sensors. There's one for the gauge, and then the other temperature sensor goes to the computer. And if that temperature sensor malfunctions, the whole fucking thing won't work. And From where she was at, I took a look around the place, and it was, uh, they basically towed her down there in the middle of fucking nowhere to, uh, fuck her off from her, for, for her car. They wanted her car. Uh, I think they were gonna get her fucked up and, uh, have their way with her, and her body might have been found dumped there somewhere, you know? That sort of thing from the people I was seeing down there. <coughs> and, uh, all a bunch of goddamn tweaker motherfuckers. Then she lets me know that after 27 years, she's hitting the bubble again. Not happy about that. I should have walked the fuck away right then. And, uh, because that was my fascination with her. She didn't do meth. That a woman her age in this area not doing meth was like seeing a fucking unicorn. Oh, there we go. We got better light. And then, uh, uh get John's alternator, have some difficulties with the truck. Because uh, I had alternator problems myself, but I got to the point where I was carrying my battery charger, my generator, and three fucking batteries in the truck because now nah, you ain't gonna start, bitch. Try another battery. And uh, got my alternator fixed while I was fixing his alternator. Why she wants me to come out and help her out because she's been out of water for a day. She can't walk to the store that's like like seven miles away and went and picked her up got her some water got her some food got her some cigarettes and gave her one of my little bottles of rheumatism medicine for the aches and pains and I've ended up towing her, what's today, Sunday? Oh, yesterday was Sunday. Towed her car on Saturday, went over, fixed John shit, got that all done. 
when he left to go to a family dinner with his uh, girlfriend, her family, his car was a pile of parts when he came back and retrieved his keys. His car was parked differently in the driveway. He got in it, it started and ran, which it wasn't doing before. Nissan Maxima. Pain in the ass to do an alternator on one of them. I mean, it's simple, but it's a pain in the ass. And uh, he took it up to the store, came back, and he's extremely happy, which makes his mother extremely happy, which means somebody's going to be sending me some money real soon for working on this vehicle. Uh, what else? Then I went down, hung out with Rhonda for a few minutes, took her around to use the bathroom, and uh, this morning went down, picked her up. We went, got coffee at the Tahoma station, where we had been getting coffee as long as we, well, we weren't fighting with each other, and. Uh, The cashier kind of looked at it as a surprise for us being together because usually we were in there bitching about each other. We basically picked up where we left off. I towed her car out of fucking Tweakerville over to uh, one of these vacant lots where another guy is parked. He don't own the property. The guy don't, next door don't own the property. But this son of a bitch threw a goddamn hizzy fit. He's been parked there for three years. And uh, the more I find out, oh, he went over and got some guy named Steve that come over and tried to be intimidating, and I didn't intimidate. Fucker goes, well, where's your tools to work on it if you're going to work on it? Because they're trying to tell him, just got to wait till the first, and then we can buy parts to fix the fucker. Got to park it somewhere. She wasn't safe up there. Well, they asked me, where's my tools? I popped my back of my canopy, dropped my tailgate. I said, there's one, two, three boxes right there. There's three extra batteries there. There's my floor jack. There's my generator to run power tools. There's gas, oil, tranny fluid. There's type F tranny fluid in there. Dig around, you might even find a fucking oil filter for this cocksucker that I bought a year ago. And that shut him up. Asked me how long I've been in the area. I said, probably longer than you. My parents moved us out here in 66. I'm class of 77 out of Federal Way. I've been around here a while. And what else stupid shit. So we end up having to move her car because this Mikey little bitch threw a fit. And what I know about Mikey can get him fucking goddamn burnt real bad. He works at the 76 station down on 99 and 54th. And he works the goddamn uh, from... From when it gets dark to when it gets daylight sort of shift. And in the middle of that, like 2, 3 in the morning, he'll close up the station for an hour. Say, be back in 10 minutes, okay? And he'll go over to the casino and gamble. I also know he's selling meth and amphetamines out of the place. So... His little shitty attitude, he don't want to pull that with me. I can burn that fucker real good. So, got her car towed over to, uh, well, she used to park across the road from there. And she's spending the night in it right now. She come up, and we had dinner up at my place. She is... Unhappy with me by how I have let the place go since she took off, but you know, fuck. Didn't have any reason besides, uh, I don't get any company, nobody visiting. 
didn't have the old lady around as an incentive to do any fucking thing around the place. So I let it go a little bit. So it got a little trashy. She says since she's doing tweak again, she'll clean the goddamn place for me. Cool. Uh, she's The reason we don't have her car up here is I got to shuffle shit around up here and her car would just be in the way. Hell, my car is in the fucking way. But as soon as I get this set in, leveled off, and can get her car up here. I'm trying to get this place moved this week. Get her car in here this week. Get her up in here this week. Because she's, um... She's lost about 30 pounds. She is actually starting to look really, well, maybe, um, been alone for a long time, <laughs> but she's actually starting to look pretty good, even though she's doing the goddamn, but she doesn't do the tweak shit like Sherilyn was doing the tweak shit, and she's coming back up tomorrow night to have, uh, dinner with me. I am going to make up some fry bread, and we're going to have, uh, tacos. And got all the stuff for that. Just hope the propane lasts long enough. Um, we're getting along like we always do when we get along. It's just that I don't trust her like I used to. She's pissed off at everybody else in her life because when it comes down to it, I'm the only person that helps her out. She's finally figuring out that all them other people that hang out with her, they're worthless. And I did let her know that, hey, I already had John shit, you know, scheduled when you called and got a hold of me. It's not like I had penciled in help Rhonda any place in this year because Last I heard from her, go the fuck away, leave me the fuck alone, don't need a babysitter, and if I did, you ain't the one. And then a text after that was, quit stalking me because we kept showing up to the same place at the same time. And we both agreed. That was coincidence. She didn't plan it. I didn't plan it. We just showed up in the same places at the same time, even after changing up our schedules. And it's just, she's probably getting the idea now that the universe keeps pushing us together, whether we want it or not. But we get along good. Hell, she just might be using me to get her car fixed, but wouldn't be the first time. And, uh. If I can get her moved in here, get her a little bit more stable, she's got some flat surface to sleep on instead of inside the fucking car. She's got heat, she's got light, she's got a place to go to the bathroom. She's got running water, hot water. She can shower, wash herself. You know, shit, I can shower and wash myself. Oh, only Tigger will go to her. The cats are scared the fuck of her I don't know why they go up to other people but for some reason they just Maruk her cat she calls a furry chicken because every time they see each other Maruk splits like he's totally scared of her hell I don't know I did tell myself when this started that I was going to end up doing this anyways, no matter how much I protested with myself about, no, she did me wrong, I ain't going to help her, and, you know, uh, it's just, just when you think life can't get any more fucking complicated. Supposed to get easier as you get older, I thought. Nah. 
still playing the same fucking games I got played with in high school. Oh, well. It is what it is. Sounds like it's starting to rain out. I should probably get the cats in here.